Hi, my name is Robert Boyd. I'm the curator of this show that you're about to see. I'm going to give you a walkthrough. The name of the show is Valparcus Afternoon, and the artists are Jim Woodring and Mark Bell. I'm going to start with this watercolor by Jim Woodring, Frank in the Pond. And it was a cover of uh, one of the issues of Jim. And um, it's just a pretty fantastic, beautiful piece. Frank is uh, the protagonist of a lot of his stories. He's sort of a asexual, nondescript cartoon animal. Here are two pieces by Mark Bell and these are not comics pieces, but the purpose of the show is to show two artists who had comics aspects to their work, but also did individual drawings and paintings as well. This is a stone lithograph by Woodring. Uh, it's not 100% finished. It's got at least one more state to go, I think. Um, and it's called Inspiration. Jim has always been obsessed with frogs for some reason. This drawing by Mark Bell is a cover for Kramer's Ergo, which is a, uh, or was, I'm not sure if it's still being published, but it was a really fantastic anthology of, of art comics. And uh, in this particular case, they had several covers. So they did one on the cover, and then they reproduced all the other covers that they had solicited inside. Uh, it includes some of uh, his better known snake uh, characters, including the, uh, the brick snake, which is one of my favorites. Trundy, this is watercolor, pen and ink. This is kind of more typical of the work that Bell is doing now as is this. Uh, I like this because uh, he's sh separating all the, uh, the, the elements. The elements are still very typically Bell. This one is called Truncate. This drawing, you can see that um, he combines cartoon characters that are, are, are quite unique, but might remind people of classic comics from the 30s like Popeye or might remind people of uh, drawings and paintings by people like H.C. Westerman or Jim Nutt and he always has lots of text combined with them. Well, this very large piece by Bell is called Belly Watt Leaflet and again he's, he's separating out the, the elements putting like white space between them and it still has a sort of sense of horror vacui. He wants to cover up every sort of inch of the surface, but instead he's, he's giving it some sort of design. There's a, a symmetry in this one that's it's, um, not necessarily present in a lot of the other ones. And here's a whole wall of Jim Woodring pieces, including a section from his brand new book called Congress of the Animals. I'm just going to walk through it. Now these books with, with Frank as, a, as the protagonist are set in a world called the Unifactor. And this world um, for Jim is, is explicable even though to people who aren't Jim they might find it merely surreal. But the, the, the reality is it has to do with his, uh, his spiritual beliefs um, which are, are influenced by Hinduism and Buddhism. The comics are wordless. Uh, that's not something Jim's always done, but, uh, but he does now pretty much exclusively. Um, which is too bad because he's actually a really good writer uh, and, and really good crafter of words, but, uh, but these, these wordless comics are a special challenge I think for a cartoonist and 
to do it, it make it not simplistic and make it uh, involved and interesting. Of course, it helps very much that Jim is a master of pen and ink. So you can sit and spend hours looking at each image, each page, each panel. And even after you've spent those hours, you still, still might not know what it means, but they will have been very satisfactory hours. And Jim's kind of a master of whatever medium he decides to employ. Watercolor, charcoal, the, the, the blacks he has used in these charcoal drawings are astonishing. This one is called Lazy Robinson. Uh, the felt fedora hat is a motif that, uh, that shows up quite often in his work. Um, I once saw an installation where he had a gray spinning disc with a felt fedora hat on the edge of it, it was slowly spinning under a spotlight. It was beautiful. There's another Frank drawing basically called Congress and related to Congress of the Elms. Now we did uh, also include a story by Mark Bell. We wanted to show both comics and freestanding works. Mark Bell's comics, like his drawings, are so dense, they, they really actually require a lot of time to read. You have to think your way through them. And, and what's, what's remarkable and, and pleasing about them is that as, as surreal and, and essentially absurdist as they seem, there's a kind of logic to them, an internal logic that uh, that makes sense. I mean, it, it, within his own world that he's created, there's there's a way that things function that's not arbitrary, and that's uh, that's one of the beautiful things about reading them and and learning about them. Got the brick snake again. And that's the name of the story. There is no escape. Hot potato. This is one of Mark's obsessions, is weird foodstuffs, like piles of bacon. You can definitely see the influence of Philip Guston on him in this piece. Lawrence, this is another all over piece. No, uh, no empty space on this. You can see the phrase pile of bacon that pops up in a bunch of pieces. That seems typically Canadian, don't you think? More Mark. Fresh from Kiev. This one reads sort of like a comic strip because each one is a separate panel, but it doesn't really tell a story. It's, it's a standalone piece. And here's another one where he's taking these things that could be food, they could be random objects. They're separate, they're separated by white space, but they cover the entire drawing. And this one's called Trippa. And finally, we've got some more drawings from Jim. And these are actually mostly pages and cover drawings from his previous book, Weathercraft. Weathercraft's main character was the manhog, who's sort of a pathetic but cruel character in, in Jim's world, the uh, world of the Unifactor. But in this case, the manhog comes close to reaching enlightenment. It's granted to him. Kind of at the last minute, he turns away from it. And that was confusing to Jim. I mean, he apparently spoke about how he knew people like that. And uh, that's the, so. So Frank is actually not the, the protagonist in this book. He's a character, but not the main character. 
and and so this this confusion, the idea that you could get this close to enlightenment and walk away, is really the subject of weathercraft. These last three drawings are end papers and covers from foreign editions. And finally, here are a few more drawings by Mark Bell. This one is unusual in the sense that it, it feels like you can see a definable space that recedes. And that's unusual for his drawings. His drawings tend to have their own kind of geography. Uh, this one is more typical, I'd say. Another all over drawing filled with characters, food, things, words, including the great phrase, stop the cassette, I like frozen gravy. Mark is full of inexplicable but hilarious phrases like that. So anyway, that's uh, Valpurgis afternoon. Hope you liked it. Thanks. <laughs>